I'm Meg Blanchett with O'Reilly Media, and we have here Doug Hanks, who is a data center architect with Juniper Networks. Hello, Doug. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming. We're here with Doug today to talk about the MX routing device, which is, um, I'm told, the most popular device that Juniper has right now. Is that correct? Yeah, it's one of our best-selling platforms, basically because of the uh, versatility. Um, it's basically one platform that can play in many different areas. Um, for example, it can play in the uh, data center uh, core and aggregation. Uh, it can play in data center interconnect, um, enterprise WAN, uh, service provider core and aggregation, as well as edge. Um, we also play in mobile backhaul and uh, broadband as well. So it's a lot of people using this device, a lot of different kinds <laughs> of people. Yeah. Um, do you have a sense of the greatest population using it? what their job title might be? Um, so the primary customers for this device is going to be uh, service providers and very large enterprise customers. Maybe some examples might be a uh, Verizon or AT&T, or another example might be a, uh, a Gap or a, um, like a, an Adobe or Apple. Okay. And what would people be switching to this from? Is there an older version of it, or is this a completely new thing? That's a good question. Uh, typically, we're uh, replacing a, uh, a Cisco device, or in some cases, it's a, an older uh, M-series. And um, the big value add for the MX, it's actually based on Ethernet. Um, it's an Ethernet device built from the ground up, and we actually focus on 10 gigs and above. And we really don't go into uh, frame relay, uh, ATM, or those kinds of uh, transports. Although we do have an option for that, but it is purpose-built for Ethernet transport. And how long do we expect this to be the big thing on the market? Um, I would say for a very long time. Um, there's a big trend right now that um, everything's going Ethernet. Um, everyone's moving towards 10 gig and well on their way to 100 gig. And we support all of that right now. So I say at least the next 10 years. Oh, wow. So long life ahead of you. And what kind of information is out there about the MX series? Um, so there is a lot of documentation on juniper.net. Um, however, one of the uh, other points was that uh, we want to get more information out to the customers in a, in a, in a book format. And um, so basically this book that we wrote is uh, purely focused on the MX. Uh, previously, there were a lot of Juniper books out there that kind of focused on routing and switching in general, but nothing exactly focused on the MX. And the MX has so much to offer, we really felt that should, there should be a book dedicated just for the MX. So we'll think, see things like uh, chapters dedicated just to the architecture of the MX, um, the switching, the advanced uh, hierarchical uh, class of service and policing. Um, we'll also see chapters on uh, virtual chassis, uh, MC lag, um, and also kind of part of the, uh, the architecture of um, the MX. It's built on a chipset called the, uh, the Trio. And basically, it's a very, very intelligent ASIC, which allows you to have inline services. So we start covering inline services later in the book. So you can do things like uh, encapsulation, uh, port mirroring, uh, JFlow, and so forth. And are there any common issues that people might find they run into with the MX series that um, maybe the book or the online documentation or somewhere out in the world can help them uncover? Um, yeah, I, I'd say definitely one of the uh, lesser known facts is that the MX can switch and it's actually a very good carrier class switch. And we dedicated about 100 pages in this book just to switching. So people looking to do um, bridging in an enterprise or SP environment can find this chapter very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. So would we expect, because um, I said there's so many people using the routing device and so many different people. Will all of those people find the book helpful, do you think, or is it a very specific subset of that audience? Yeah, so we did write this book for a lot of different people, and that was very, very difficult to do. Um, the first is kind of which target market to write this for. Is it going to be more SP-focused or more enterprise-focused? Um, we felt that we should do a 50-50 split, so which um, it's written for both enterprise and SP. Um, as well as kind of, you know, what role are we trying to write this to? Is it the architect level, a uh, engineer or an operator? Um, that was actually very difficult to do because an architect's going to be looking at key points as uh, like what role 
um, do I need in my solution? And how does the MX play into that? What kind of attributes does it have? Can it route? Can it switch? Can it do broadband, mobile? And kind of like, well, where do I place that in my architecture? So we definitely answered those types of questions for the architect. Mm -hmm. um, the engineer is going to be more focused on um, what, what technologies are available. Um, is it MC lag? Is it virtual chassis? And what's the difference between the two? And kind of like, what's the uh, decision criteria for choosing virtual chassis over MC lag or vice versa? Um, there's also a lot of scaling considerations in there uh, in terms of, you know, how many routes can I have if I do this versus that? And of course, the operators will be more concerned with, well, you know, now that we kind of, you know, picked our path, um, how do I go in and actually implement this technology? Um, how do I configure it? How do I verify it actually works and actually support this in the future? So we had to cover all three aspects in the book. And kind of one of the methods, methods that we did to uh, do that was write a, a topology in the preface of the book. And it's a very standard topology. It has uh, four MXs. It has uh, four EXs. And kind of as we go along through each chapter, we'll take a subset of that topology and say, okay, for switching, we'll do X, Y, and Z, but only apply to this subset of the topology. Mm -hmm. So kind of as, you, as you read through chapter one through chapter nine, that topology never changes, but you'd be using different portions of that. So the architect, engineer, and operator find that very helpful. And is that, is the architect to the engineer, is that kind of a beginner to advanced thing, or is it all very advanced? I mean, what kind of skill set do you need to use the routing device? Um, it's going to be the same skill set to use any Junos device. Um, we have uh, one Junos, it's a single control plane. So for example, if you configure quality of service on one device, like a, a firewall or a switch, it's going to be exactly the same on a router. And the same holds true for the MX. Um, there is going to be advanced features on the MX that's going to go above and beyond that baseline, which we do cover. But this book is specifically written for the advanced uh, reader. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a very avid reader of technical books. I love all the O'Reilly books. I read everything from programming to system administration and to uh, networking. And um, like one trend that we found is that you know each book that we read, it tends to kind of go over the basics a bit too much. So we made a conscious decision to basically say, hey, we don't want to cover the, the networking basics like spanning tree or LSA types and OSPF. We said, you know, if you want to learn about this, there's a bunch of other books you can go read to learn about that. But we want to focus on all the advanced topics on the MX and kind of, you know, take the additional deep dive. So this book is written for the, uh, the reader who has their JNCIE or their CCIE. We're kind of well on their way to actually achieving that certification. And so with the people that use not just the book, but the actual device, they would already have that certification as well. That's something they should expect to get before being able to really use it to its full potential. Um, no, that was just the context of uh, the book. Uh, the actual device itself, it doesn't require, you know, a JNCIE or a CCIE. It's very easy and straightforward to use. But going kind of taking an extra deep dive into a, a book perspective, we did want to make it uh, raise the bar to the CCIE and the JNCIE level. So what is one of the exciting things that someone coming out of the Juniper MX series book can get out of it? Um, so we tried very hard to... Uh, write this book to basically uh, show the network admin or the operator or engineer to uh, how to build a better network. Um, you know, it's not enough to, you know, learn how to configure MC lag or virtual chassis, but how do you actually combine these features together and, you know, what's the scaling considerations or how these work in tandem? Um, you'll actually find that, you know, you can basically collapse multiple tiers in your network with one platform. And uh, we'll show you how to uh, route, uh, how to bridge, um, how to set up uh, multi-chassis lag, how to set up cause, and how to do this all together in one topology. So uh, I think it's very exciting. Um, again, I think you can build a better network with the MX just because of all the different services available, um, especially the inline services where you don't have to go out and buy a, a services card just for JFlow, or if you want to do a network address translation, for example, or do GRE. So it actually opens up a lot more possibilities in terms of what can I do on my network with one device. So to finish up, can you give us an idea of what your team will be working on next at Juniper? Yeah, so um, I think we're working on some bigger and better chassis that you guys might see in the future. And um, also, which I think is more exciting, is uh, we'll have some very solution-specific uh, design and implementation guides, which basically says that, hey, Let's take a solution like uh, multi-tenant data centers or mobile backhaul 
And how do you design that? What's the considerations and what's the scaling numbers? Like for example, um, how many subscribers could I handle or how many tenants could I have in my data center? And we'll also give you the uh, implementation guide to basically say, how do I configure that, troubleshoot and support that? So um, you should be seeing that pretty soon. Oh, so you have a lot to work on. We should yeah. probably get to that. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming and talking with us. And congratulations on the book. Yeah, thank you so much. I was happy to do this.